No, well, what we did is that we took a four minute square and when we put any kind of symbolic thing in that, we always make sure that it had a border around it. That's because when we got to move it, we didn't have to erase the previous steps. It would erase itself. Because it would rewrite the blank background from each time we moved. So that was an important factor. We had to do that. And it's called self-erasing character. But certain things we did in the operating system that we were stuck with. Okay? In fact, uh, the operating system <coughs> was the big keynote that we did. Everything was macros to it. Very few of the games were doing all on their own. They called out separate teams out of the, the operation. Yeah. How much code was the operating system? The operating system was uh, 2K. Huge. <laughs> but again, remember, we use a thing called, which is a dirty word to a lot of programmers, called machine code. We were machine hackers. We didn't do it. We'd love to have had C, but this don't work for us. Any more questions, or we'll go ahead and just wrap it up and there's some show and tell stuff that anybody wants to look at. Uh, the uh, design of uh, video games, uh, some of the things you were saying about uh, how like, the games would uh, adapt to difficulty, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how you were playing. Mm -hmm. um, did that uh, uh, ever get written up in any sort of documents, or was it all kind of in the heads of the people who were doing the games? It was kind of in the heads of the people who were doing the games, unfortunately. I, see, again, like Mike, a lot of things that he did, he thought people would appreciate what they would do when they played them. But you didn't realize a lot of people did not understand that. In fact, I tell you, one other th funny thing we had one time is Mike sat down and wrote a program that was a demo program on how to use this. And on the screen, it would sit there and tell you, turn right, turn left. And if you did it the wrong way, it would tell you, you know, that's right instead of left. You know? And the whole thing started by pushing the reset button would start the program. Well, what used to happen, I was at a show one time, and there was a guy there, and he kept pushing the reset button. And he kept saying, please do not push the reset button. Push it again. Please do not push the reset button. Push it again. Right? So he said, this thing's broken. It's no you are. <laughs> you can't read it. He says, don't push it. You keep pushing it. And again, like I said, you have people that will not read. <laughs> they will not, and, I'm, and there's no way to, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's amazing how people look at something that you think is logical, and they don't see it. They really don't. Like, I'll never forget one time, my old man and I went to a stereo show one time, and they had this phonograph player upside down, and it was tracking the record player, and it, it was bouncing up and down. So this guy comes along and he sees it, you know. And he said, How do you keep the record on? Huh? This thing is tracking upside down. He wants to know how to keep the record on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's. I don't know. It's. Uh, this day and age, uh, I think that games have made an advancement in, in hardware that if you really look at it, I was talking to Dave about it, this is the next wave of games, really. It's going to be, you know, the, the graphics are all selected to be as high as you can get. They're all done toward games. In fact, it's amazing how games have been the lead of certain things in technological innovation that we don't recognize. Because the human factor element in working with machines isn't always predictable. You use games to kind of figure that out. Uh, everything I've worked on, in one sense or the other, was a game. And a game ends up being a uh, surface of something that was built into it or something done. Like I remember at a place one time we worked, we had a, a box, and it was called a do-nothing box. And it had switches and knobs galore on it. And if you touched any one of them, the thing would start ringing. <laughs> and it was plugged into the wall. If you pulled it out of the wall, it still ring. <laughs> and it was done like that to trap somebody to come along again. Because as soon as the new fish came in the company, you'd sit there and look at this box and go, I got it. <laughs> I got 
out of touch one another. Man, you know, <laughs> the, this same guy did the, uh, the hand box. So you know, with the bell, uh, uh, bell aviation hand box? It was a wooden box about this long, about this high, and it had a switch on it. And if you turned the switch on it, the lid would open up and a hand would come out and turn it back off and go back in. <laughs> <laughs> 